one. Looks so crooked up here. <laughs> All right. <sighs> Praise the Lord, everyone. And um, let's get our Bibles out. Do you have a do you have a little bit of reading through, which is not my strong suit, but I'll I will um, still read it um, because some of these scriptures in their full context, in their full uh, uh, power of the word um, gives us gives us great confidence. So <clears throat> I want to talk about the uh, the boldness that we are to have in the last days or always but especially more in the in the last days <clears throat> the uh the world out there as we know is increasingly getting more bold with all of their own man-made opinions with all of their own uh personal um are we um what do you call it virtues that they want to pursue their own opinions that they want to um that they want to bring out <clears throat> we don't have too many of those ourselves uh personally because we know that we want to go by the word of god we want we know that we want to go by what the bible says we should do what the bible says we should say how the bible says we should think and what the bible says is right and wrong and our personal opinion about any of those things has nothing to do with with any of it praise the lord and i remember when i received the holy spirit and i spoke in tongues that i realized that in the back of my mind i realized that uh i had received uh, i'd received god's holy spirit which was proof to me that god exists and therefore if god existed and I heard about this experience of receiving the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues from the Bible, the word of God, that the word of God must be true. That if this was God's word, it must be true from beginning to end, not part of it, not some of it, that the whole thing was true. And I knew that because of that, there was going to be an answer for everything. There was going to be an answer for every argument, uh, a way to tell me how to behave what to say which way to go all of those things and that it was the final answer because it was god's word so let's go to philippians chapter 4 <clears throat> philippians chapter 4 and um we're going to start in verse 5 says, let your moderation be known unto all men. Moderation being everything else in this world, everything else that we like to pursue, everything else that we need to take care of, pales in comparison or is second place, as Pastor Steve was talking about last time, to the things of the Lord. Moderation and everything else by putting the Lord first. <clears throat> Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. It's the last days. The Lord is coming soon. Any minute, the Lord <laughs> is coming soon. Um, and it remains true, no matter how many of those days pass by. Verse 6. Be careful for nothing or do not worry about anything do not worry about anything but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known unto god and the peace of god which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through christ jesus so saying don't worry about anything but instead be prayerful be thankful to the Lord for what he's done for you already. Put your trust in him through giving your worries to him, through praying about what you 
want to happen or what you need to happen in your life. Give all those things to him and don't worry about anything. <clears throat> and you will have uh, you will have this peace in your hearts and mind, this calmness, this rest that we know the scriptures talk about. And in verse eight, what do you do instead? Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do. And the God of peace, again, that peace shall be with you. So we have this encouragement in the Bible to not be worried, not be fearful. It says, be careful for nothing. And put all those things that you're worried about to the Lord. And instead, think about those good things. Think about the, the things that are happening that are good. And, um, and also in the last verse there, verse 9, those things that you have learned that we read about in the scriptures, do those things, praise the Lord. And so we have an admonishment here, like I said, to not worry. <clears throat> I will read one verse in Proverbs 28, just one line. It's verse one. The wicked flee when no man pursueth, but the righteous are bold as a lion. The wicked or worldly or those who do not line up with God's word will run away. They'll run away. Even when nobody's chasing them, they'll run away. They'll hide. The other scriptures talk about being in darkness and not wanting the light to shine on them. But the righteous are bold as a lion. Those who have the truth, those who are on the side of God's word and what it says, and have experienced the power of God's words, not in word only, but in power, are bold as a lion. Let's go to Acts chapter 21. The book of Acts was a lot about the disciples, the early church being very bold in preaching the gospel and spreading the word even in the middle of where they were which was a place of uh well they they went around uh, all of their known worlds there but places of uh, idolatry worshiping idols places of worshiping uh strange gods places of um what they would have called modern thinking progressive thinking, places of, um, of all kinds of things. They preached the word in all these places. And yes, they were, they were hated and they were threatened and all of those things. Let's go to, um, you're in Acts 21. Let's go to verse 10. <clears throat> Talking about Paul here. And as we tarried there many days, there came down from Judea a certain prophet named Agabus. And when he was come to us, he took Paul's girdle and he bound his own hands and feet and said, Thus saith the Holy Ghost, so shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man that owneth this girdle and shall deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. So he he acted out a prophecy with Paul and said, this is what's going to happen. There's people that are going to, that are going to capture you, tie you up, you know, handcuff you and deliver you to the Gentiles. In verse 12, and when we heard these things, both we and they of that place besought him not to go up to Jerusalem. Then Paul answered, what mean ye to weep and to break mine heart? 
For I am ready not to be bound only, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. And when he would not be persuaded, we ceased, saying, The will of the Lord be done. And after those days, we took up our carriages and we went up to Jerusalem. Paul was ready. He was, uh, he was bold. He would not be uh, persuaded by uh, what was going to happen, even knowing what was going to happen. He didn't care. He needed to preach the word. He had been called to preach the word as we had been called to preach the word of God. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Um, whether he's bound, whether he, you know, they kill him in the, in the natural sense and his body is destroyed, he knows that he has the victory no matter what. <clears throat> and there's no telling what the Lord uh, will do. He's broken people in the scriptures out of prison. He's brought people back to life. He's done many miraculous things. And so the wisest decision is always to, uh, to, preach, the, to preach the word. Praise the Lord. And, um, you know, I, I, I say these things and maybe it's running around in your, in, in your head. The world is, is threatening. The world is uh, scary um, and becomes increasingly more bold towards us, towards people of God. Um, other uh, false Christian groups or other religious groups also become increasingly bold and and uh, and threatening. And we can read scriptures that say to uh, to be wise, and we should, and we should always be wise. But also that we are careful that it doesn't make us cower away and not preach the gospel. That it doesn't make us um, not reach out to those who are to, uh, to those who are looking to those who are searching. Um, and to do those things that, that the Lord has sent us to do. <clears throat> and it's not always going to be, uh, it's not always going to be clean and perfect. In fact, I have a su surprise scripture. It's not on the list, but it's very short. It's Proverbs 14. It's one line. Verse 4, 14, 4. <clears throat> I sent my talk notes a little earlier, and then I had this. Oh, yeah. Add that scripture and add that later. Um, it says, where the oxen are, 14.4, where the oxen are, the crib is clean, or the stall is clean. Oh, sorry, where no oxen are. Sorry, <laughs> I'm completely backwards. Where no oxen are, the stall is clean. But... Much increase is by the strength of the ox. So what is scripture saying here? The ox is something big and strong that helps to plow the fields. Plow them more deeply, more evenly, bigger areas than you could ever do by yourself. So that you can reap more. You can sow more. You can reap more crop. <coughs> You can grow by all of those things by having an ox, this big brute of an animal that is so messy, dirty, hard to look after. <clears throat> and and uh, when you have it in the, in the stall, you're going to have to clean the stall constantly every day. It's never going to look clean. It's never going to look tidy and perfect in the stall. But without the ox, having it not in the stall, not having an ox, you can have it clean, you can have it tidy, you can have it perfect, you can have all the tools where they go, you can have the, the, the ground swept out, cobwebs swept, everything's perfect, less work for you, but you're not reaping the reward. You're not getting the crop that you could have gotten. You're not uh, getting the benefit. The ox in this case is preaching the gospel, 
is the power. The ox symbolizes the power. The power is the word of God. The power is what follows us. The power is what we have to bring to the world. We have to bring that power. We have to use that power. That is our ox. And it's messy. It's very, very messy. But without it, we can't reap the reward. We can't grow the kingdom of God. We can't do any of those things that we were called to do. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. And I think we, we all know these things, of course. Let's go to... Um, Let's go to Ephesians uh, chapter 6, just, um, just quickly. In verse 19, Ephesians 6 talks about preparing yourself and putting on the whole armor of God. Helmet of salvation. Feet shod, covered with the, the preparation of the gospel of peace to Go and stand and preach the gospel. It talks about the armor of God. How it prepares you to go and preach the gospel. And then, uh, in verse 19, And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open, that, yeah, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. As I ought to speak. Somebody who's even been taken into captivity, still speaking boldly. We can remember another story in the gospel. Where they're taken into captivity, speaking boldly and singing praises to the Lord. And it change the situation they were broken free but that we may speak boldly as it says as i ought to speak praise the lord let's go to mark 16 mark 16 we know what this says verse 15 we know what this says it says preach the gospel but Let's just review some of these things. Jesus with them, verse 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth is baptized and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name... Shall they cast out devils? Shall they speak with new tongues? Shall they take up serpents? And if they drink any deadly thing, shall not hurt them. Uh, they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So some signs there to look for. Signs of healing. Signs of protection. Signs of receiving the Holy Ghost. These signs that identify believers, signs that follow believers and their work. Verse 19. So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. Jesus' last words to them, for he ascended up into the clouds. Go preach the gospel. This is what you're going to look for. And I'm going to work with you. I'm going to confirm with, with miracles. You're going to see people's lives changed. You're going to see them healed. You're going to see them protected. You're going to see them receiving the Holy Ghost. And they went. And they did exactly that. And they did exactly that. <clears throat> um, let's be turning to Acts chapter four. Acts 
Acts chapter 4. Uh, before we get into that, I just want to say in um, I just want to say in Corinthians, it says, uh, seeing that we have such hope, hope and trust in the Lord, we use great plainness of speech. Great plainness of speech. Again, we only look to say, what does the Bible say? <laughs> My own opinion doesn't matter. My own emotions don't matter. How I feel about it or my political views or anything else does not enter into it whatsoever. It is only about what the word of God says. That is it. And we use great plainness of speech in, uh, in speaking these things. Um, they could say nothing against it is what we're going to read about. In chapter uh, one, I'm sorry, chapter four, verse one of Acts. And as they spake unto the people, so this was after somebody, sorry, a little context. This was after somebody was healed. Somebody that um, was, was, uh, was begging was healed and it, it shocked everyone. And some people didn't like it. There was the power of God being shown. So verse one, as they spake unto the people, the priests and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them, being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they laid their hands on them and put them in hold unto the next day, for it was now eventide. Howbeit many of them which heard the word believed, and the number of men was about 5,000. So just pausing there for a moment, 5,000 people heard the word and believed because of this power that was demonstrated. Because they first went out and, um, and were preaching the gospel and, um, and the Lord confirmed his word with signs following, with somebody being healed here. They continued to preach by what power this man was healed by God through Jesus. Uh, through Jesus, you can you can have um, uh, resurrection. And these people believed. Let's skip down to verse 13. Now, when they the Sadducees saw that the boldness of saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men. They marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. And beholding the man which was healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. Praise the Lord. We preach the gospel. We pray for people. We see healings. We see miracles. We see things happening. The Lord confirming his word. As we have faith in him that he will do those things, he does those things. And as we preach the gospel and someone says, hey, you can't do that. You can't say that. We don't like it. We don't want you preaching the gospel. We don't want you saying that we have to change or we have to believe in a, in a God that we don't agree with or we don't like it. I just love the fact that in the story that it says they could say nothing against it because they see the evidence. When someone receives the Holy Ghost and they speak in tongues, they themselves can say nothing against it because they now were just shown the evidence. When a family member sees that somebody has changed or that somebody was healed and they knew the person before and now they know the person after, same as the situation here. They knew this man before, this crippled man begging at the, at the gates. They'd known him. He was there for a long time. He's been there forever, as long as they can remember. Now suddenly he's standing and leaping and praising the Lord. And they can say nothing against it. 
A true miracle has happened here. I don't like that you're preaching the gospel. I don't like that you're saying that people have to change. I don't like that you're saying we're all guilty. I don't like any of those things. But I can't say anything against it because obviously there's some evidence here. Praise the Lord. The Lord confirming his word. <clears throat> Verse 15. But when they had commanded them to go outside of the council, they conferred among themselves, saying, What shall we do to these men? For that indeed a notable miracle hath been done by them is manifest to all of them that dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. But, verse 17, that it spread no further among the people, let us straightly threaten them that they speak henceforth to no man in his in this name. Isn't that just so amazing? The stubbornness of man's own will. The stubbornness that men don't want to be told what to do. The stubbornness that people do not want to change that people do not want to be told they're wrong, that people want to have power over other people. So much so that they can clearly see a miracle. And instead of saying, well, let's have some of this. Let's be a part of this. <laughs> I need a healing of this. I know that this uh, other guy in the, in the Sadducee council, he needs a healing of that. I know that my family member is uh, needs a provision. Let's let's get on board with this. I can see it for myself. It's obviously true. Let's do it. Instead of all that, instead of taking what the Lord has to offer, they couldn't let go of their natural selves and what they naturally wanted. So they said, instead, let's try to keep this quiet. Let's try to take away their boldness by threatening them, by beating them. And then let's see if they talk about this anymore. I don't like that boldness. I don't like them opening their mouths. Let's take it away. So in verse 18, and they, and they called them and commanded them not to speak at all or teach in the name of Jesus. And their response in verse 19, <clears throat> Peter and John answered and said unto them, whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. Basically said, we're not going to listen to you. You've bound us up. You've taken us prisoner. You're the people in charge <laughs> in the natural sense in this world. But yet we can't. Sorry. There's somebody that's way above your pay grade that's told us something different. And we should probably listen to them instead of you. <clears throat> Verse 20. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. What are we doing when we preach the gospel? We preach the word of God. But we also, more importantly, preach what we have seen and heard. We've personally experienced a miracle. We've received the Holy Ghost and spoken in tongues. I was healed of many things. The first one being uh, addictions to alcohol, to drugs, immediately. Not in a couple weeks time, not in a few months time, immediately. I was, one of the other first ones was uh, a chlorine sensitivity. When I used to get into chlorine, I would swell up with welts all over my body. Big camouflage looking puffy welts like you're like when you have an allergic reaction to something. I would get sick and um, just about pass out from chlorine, something normal that everybody can come in contact with. <clears throat> but I was baptized by full immersion according to uh, what the Bible says to do. Sign my name on the contract paper with the Lord God. And he signed his name by filling me with the Holy Ghost. And I spoke in tongues. And I entered into that, into that adoption contract with the Lord. Healed of those things. Many people healed that we've heard. 
And how can we not but tell people about these things? We don't pretend to know things we don't know. We explain what's happened to us. We share with them what's happened to us. We have hope in the promises of the, of the, of the word of God that it'll happen to them because it's happened to us. Praise the Lord. We, um, we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. And no amount of threatening, no amount of what might happen to us in the natural is going to stop us from doing that. Praise the Lord. Verse 21. The Sadducees' response to this, verse 21. So when they had further threatened them, so they kept, okay, well, you still can't do that. Further threatened them. They let them go, finding nothing how they might punish them because of the people. For all men glorified God for that which was done. <clears throat> for the man was, uh, was above 40 years old. And we know that's, that's, that's old. <laughs> <laughs> The crippled man, in other words, they knew him for a long time, as we said. He was been there for a long time. And uh, they knew him before. He was always going to be crippled. He was always going to be begging. He was always going to be there. And suddenly he's not. The power of the Lord confirming his word because of their boldness. And being let go, they went to their own company and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said unto them so they went brothers and sisters went back to their family of god to the rest of their brothers and sisters let's skip down to verse 29 and a little prayer from them after being threatened beaten all these things verse 29 and now lord behold their threatenings and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak the word by stretching forth thine hand to heal. So we got preaching the word. And now we have signs following. By stretching forth thine hand to heal. And that signs and wonders may be done by the name of the holy child Jesus. Give us the boldness to speak. That we behold their threatenings. How they're threatening us. How they want us to not be bold. But Lord make us bold. And heal the people that we speak to and show signs and wonders as you promised. Verse 31. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken and they were all assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost or the Holy Ghost in them was stirred up. would be a better translation. And they spoke the word of God with boldness. So they did exactly that. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Let's go to... Hebrews 13. I was thinking the same thing. Every time I see Hebrews now, I want a cup of coffee. <laughs> and talking about still, again, the ability to be bold. 13. Hebrews 13. And verse 5 says, let your conversation, and this is also your behavior, everything that you do, be without covetousness or, you know, desire to have something else outside of what you have. And be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. So that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. And I will not fear what men shall do unto me. Why am I reading this verse that seems like doesn't apply? <laughs> it's because when I see these words, at first gives us the instruction of not wanting or desiring so badly anything outside of what we currently have. 
and somehow that's going to make us bold. By saying the Lord is my helper, we will not fear what men shall do. We will not fear what we will not get or how it will affect our natural lives. We need no material things from other people. We're not worried about disrupting our friends, our social circles or connections. We're not worried about people in business or whatever um, thinking badly about us because we preach the word of God or we walk in the ways of the Lord and we don't do what they say. We don't come to uh, their thing instead of our thing, which is the meeting or fellowship, just to make them happy. Because if we don't, we might lose our social status or our job or our potential for uh, gaining more money or, uh, or our um, you know, parents that provide something for us. That's what I think this is speaking about here. If we live without this covenant, if we're content with what we have and we rely on the Lord, knowing the Lord will give me what I need, the Lord will provide what I need, not mankind, not anybody, so I can boldly preach the gospel. I don't need anyone's in this world. I don't need their approval. I don't need their validation. I don't need them to think I'm good or whatever. I just need to not worry about them. <laughs> I need to not worry about what they shall do to me or how it will affect me naturally or socially in this world. Um, the Lord is my helper. The Lord is my provider. The Lord is my protector. The Lord is, are, is all of these things that I need. I'm content. I'm content with just having the Lord and knowing that he will supply. Let's go to Isaiah 6. <clears throat> Just two more scriptures, really, before I wrap up. Isaiah 6, Old Testament, verse 7. We have Isaiah speaking with the Lord, and he, he has a, he has a hot stone to a coal to purify the, the lips of Isaiah. Verse 7, and he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched uh, this hath touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. Similar to us, we're born again. We're born again, our iniquity is taken away, our sin is purged. In verse 8. Also, I heard a voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send? Who will go for us? Then said I, here am I, send me. Doesn't matter what the details are. Here am I, Lord, send me. Why did he have this attitude of here am I, send me? Because the Lord has just taken away his iniquity, purged his sin, wiped the slate clean, gave him something he didn't deserve, put him in a position he didn't deserve. Lord's done all of these things for him as the Lord's done all of these things for us. And immediately has the attitude, here am I, send me. Whatever you want me to do now, wherever you want me to go, whatever you want me to say, here am I. Verse nine, and he said, or the Lord said, <clears throat> go and tell this people, hear ye indeed, but understand not. See ye indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat and make their ears heavy and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and convert and be healed. Saying, go preach the gospel. They might have seen the word of God, but they didn't understand it. They might have heard a few things that the Bible said, but they didn't understand it. You need to go and show them. You need to go and explain it to them. Um, and verse 11, then I said, or then said I, 
Lord, how long? How long shall we keep doing that? And he answered, until the cities be wasted without inhabitant and the houses without man and the land be utterly desolate. Forever. Until the Lord comes back. On and on and on until there's no one else to talk to. Until the Lord comes back. Praise the Lord. That's how long. Let's go back to <clears throat> Hebrews to finish up chapter 10. And verse 23. Verse 23 says, let us hold fast to the profession of our faith, professing our faith, speaking about our faith without wavering. For he is faithful that promised. What if the Lord doesn't confirm his word might be in the back of our minds? It says, don't worry about that. Speak. Pray with people. See them healed. See them delivered. For he is faithful that promised. Verse 24. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much more as you see the day approaching. Profession of our faith without wavering, being bold as you see the day approaching more and more. As uh, the world becomes, as other scriptures describe, People uh, lacking a love at all, people uh, being bold in their own ideas, we must not cower in the corner of, uh, of their boldness and instead holding fast to the profession of our faith without wavering and so much more as we see the day approaching. Praise the Lord. I'm going to leave it there. And... Um, we are going to uh, do the communion now, and we'll have somebody go back and, and gather those things. Thank you, Fidel. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. The world has ideas about what the Bible says. They're usually wrong. The world has ideas about what we think. They're usually wrong. The world sees examples of other people calling themselves uh, uh, Christians. But they're not Christians <laughs> at all. Um, and we won't be able to, um, won't be able to overcome how bad the world's getting, but we are called to, to speak. We are called to, um, uh, to open our mouths about these things and, and preach the gospel and save more souls. Praise the Lord.